In my previous video of this series, I showed you how to code up a class inside a class library. A class library can be compiled as a dynamic link library or a DLL file. I then showed you how to reference that class library from a Windows Forms application, which itself will build as an executable or .exe file. We were then able to instantiate an object from that class and to call its methods and properties. The properties inside my cat class were defined using public variables. Now I'm going to code up another class library, but this time I'm going to show you how to use property procedures. I'm going to code up a person class, so I'm going to call my class library personnel. Now I could put my person class inside the same library as my cat class. How you organise an application is entirely up to you. It's all about what's appropriate. Remember to give this a meaningful name because this is going to compile as personnel.dll. Also, make sure you know where it's going to be saved so you can reference it later. So here we go, Visual Basic, Class Library, and I get Class 1 for free. I'm going to change the name of this to Person. So from this class I'll be able to instantiate as many Person objects as I like. Now I could declare my properties just using public variables like I did before. But you'll see in a moment that using property procedures gives me more control over the values which can be assigned to these properties. So I'm going to change the way I declare them using dim statements instead. Because these variables are no longer public, they're no longer part of the interface of my person class. In fact, I'm going to use my own naming convention here as well. I like st in front of a string variable name. Now, to write a property procedure, I say public property, give the property a name. No st prefix this time because this is what's going to be seen by my front end application. I want to keep it user friendly, or should I say programmer friendly. And all properties have a data type. Now, I need a couple of special methods inside this property procedure to give me access to the private variable which is going to contain the property value. Watch this. I simply type the word set, press enter, and Visual Studio has given me the stubs of the programs I need. The first one is called set. Notice it's being passed a parameter called value. I'm going to assign the value it's passed to my container variable. So when this program is called, which is when we attempt to assign a value to the property, the value will be passed in here and it will be assigned to this variable. The get section is more like a function. This can return the value of st first name when the property value is requested from the front end. So I'm simply going to say return st first name. And that's it, a property procedure. I'll do another one very quickly while I'm here. And there we are. Let's compile this class library. Now I'm going to create a new front-end application to make use of personnel.dll. So a new project of type Windows Forms application, given a meaningful name. We'll go with the category again. Make sure I know where I'm saving it. And I'll pop a button on that form. Before I do anything else, I need to create a project reference to the personnel class. And we'll browse out for that. Make sure it's the right one. OOP, personnel, personnel, that looks right. 
Those are from my old tests. And I'm going to import personnel. Which means I don't have to prefix the person class name with the name of the DLL every time I want to create a new object. So let's create a new person. Dimpy as new person. And we'll set some properties. So if I type P followed by a dot, I can see the first name and last name properties there. Let's assign some values. Tidy things up a little bit. OK, and let's retrieve those values. Notice that the properties are displayed with a little spanner in the list. When a property was declared using a public variable, it was a little blue box in the list. When we use property procedures, we get a spanner. It makes a little distinction between the two. So let's see this in action. There we go. Now, just to remind you, when I assign a value to a property, I'm calling the set portion of the property procedure. And this will put the new value of the property into a container variable, which I declared privately. When I retrieve a property value, which is what I'm doing here, it calls the get part of the property procedure. And this is a bit like a function, because it will return what's in that container variable to this program. Now, I said to you before that property procedures are the preferred way of declaring properties. And this begs the question, why? Well, let's see. I'm going to open up my class library again. And I'm going to put in another property called date of birth. And this one's going to include some validation. So first of all, I'll declare the container variable. Now I'll write the property procedure. As I did before, I'll assign the incoming value to the container variable. And the get portion of the property procedure will return that. So nothing new here yet. But now let's add some validation to this property. I'm going to check that the date of birth assigned to this property indicates an age of 18 or more. Notice I'm using the year function to get the year part of the current date, which is expressed as now. And I'm also getting the year part of the value which is being passed into this property. I'm subtracting one from the other to get the age. If it's less than 18, I'm displaying a message on the screen and I exit the property. Only if the age is greater than or equal to 18 do I assign the value to the container variable. The get section is the same as it was. Notice also that I'm using the word me to refer to a property of this class. Code inside the class can refer to its own properties. I could have just used the container variables here, but if there was any kind of validation going on these other properties, then it would be applied at this point. Let's rebuild this and see what happens. Back to the front end application. And I'm going to assign a value to the date of birth property this time. And that's obviously a very young person. Run the program. And there's the validation kicking in. It's not going to allow me to assign this particular date of birth. Let's try someone a little bit older. No error message this time.
So, hopefully you can see that the benefit of using property procedures is we can validate the incoming data. In fact, the validation could be a lot more sophisticated than what you're seeing here. Indeed, I could also add some code to the GET section of the property procedure and do some pre-processing of any data that comes back when the property value is requested. So, in future, I'll be writing my properties as property procedures. Before I finish, I just want to show you a handy little debugging option in Visual Studio. I'm going into Tools Options, and underneath the debugging section, you can see there's a checkbox, Step Over Properties and Operators. Now, this is checked by default, so I've taken the tick off. I'm going to set a breakpoint in my front-end application, and I should point out that I've closed down my other instance of Visual Studio, which had the class code in it. This is the only instance I've got running. So, when I run it up and start stepping into the code, I've created the new person object, and now I'm setting the first name property. Watch what happens. Another tab has appeared here, and I'm stepping into the class library. And you can see here the value that's being passed into the set section of the first name property. I'll keep stepping. And now I'm back into the front end again. And then I step into the back end again as I assign a value to the last name property. Now I'm going to request the values of those properties. I keep stepping, and you can see the GET section is running now. This is incredibly useful when you're debugging your class libraries. All it took was a tick in a box.